As Rob said, it's primarily spilling out of the subprime mortgage market, but it's causing jitters throughout the, the, the credit, the, the world of finance, the world of credit. People are demanding a little bit uh, higher standards uh, for all sorts of deals today than they did just three months ago. That's true, but I will tell you that if this deal doesn't get done, it's not going to be because of the, they couldn't get the financing. Uh, oh, the lion's share of the $10, $11 billion is actually already lined up. So if you were to compare the problems that are happening in the subprime mortgage industry and the problems that are occurring with the Tribune and this deal not getting done, it would not be because of financing. But does that psychology that you speak of in, intrude upon the thinking of Wall Street that right now says, I don't know if this stock was worth $34? I mean, is that... Is that the kind sure. of psychological overlay we're I talking about? I happen to think, and I won't bore you or your viewers with my economic theory here, but I think assets have been repriced. I think they were mispriced for a period of time, and now they're getting repriced. I don't think we're heading into a recession or even a bear market. Have we're you been reading my questions here? Because <laughs> I was just <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I do think that whatever assets were worth a few months ago, whether it's your home or your stocks or your bonds, there's a new value for that. And that's because of what's occurred in the credit and subprime market. And one of the things we were talking about earlier over here was when we talk about the home market and the home buying market, there's been a kind of psychology going back a couple of years where people look at their house and say, wow, I bought this for 100000 and it's worth $400,000. i have got all this money to borrow against. I can refinance. I can build a room addition. That psychology is somewhat, not somewhat, it's being shattered too, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, you see that in in foreclosures, you see that in, in the length of time that homes are on the market. You see that in people reducing prices of homes. You see that in all the, the house, housing construction numbers. I don't think we're at the bottom of, of the, 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 the housing down cycle by any means. I, I don't either, but that word, Michael, cycle, is really what you have to keep in mind. And economies and markets have four stages to a cycle, expansions, peaks, contractions, and troughs, and they're normal. And we're going through a contraction right now in housing. So we're going to hit a trough? Eventually we will, but this is a garden. What's the distance between the contraction and the trough? You know, Carol, if I knew that answer. <laughs> but, but actually a trough, in this sense, is a good thing, because that means you've touched bottom and then from bottom, you start coming back up. It depends and on your vantage point if you're looking down or you're looking up. On, it depends on when you bought your home. It depends upon when you bought your stocks. If, if you bought long enough ago, you're still looking at healthy gains if you bought stocks or if you bought your home. If you bought just a couple of years ago and were intending to quickly flip your home before your adjustable rate mortgage kicked in, you may be in some trouble. The lion's share of the foreclosures are homes that were purchased or mortgages that were obtained within the last 24 months. And they were obtained, and is the villain, is the culprit here the hedge funds that were buying these bundles of mortgages? No. In fact, I think they were actually the white knight, and they provided an ability for for many buyers to be able to at least have a chance at home ownership. Hedge funds are the white knight? Well, yes. I mean, they had the liquidity, they provided capital, and they, they assigned a certain amount of risk to it. The fact that some of these mortgages ended up becoming uh, defaults and foreclosures probably would have been the case whether it was where, wherever the capital came from. The rates were a little higher for subprime borrowers, but that was, that was what was needed in order to attract anybody to loan to them at all. Do you agree? I don't think I'd call them white knights, but I don't think that they deserve to wear the they're jacket for this. They're not villains either? They're not, not necessarily the villains. I mean, I think there's plenty of blame to go around, including uh, blaming some of the homeowners who were basically looking at that housing as a, a new form of investment. You could get a better return in buying a house or properties than you could in the stock market, so lots of money flooded in. And you think they were wrong on that? Uh, they, they are now. If you, if you bought more recently, yes. When we look to the headlines that involve the Sentinel company in Northbrook, the question of their investigation based on fraud, the question of what happened to them, the kind of money that their investors tried to get out and seemed to have some difficulty in, is that something that affects day-to-day -day consumers? I, I think not. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with, with Sentinel and what they do. And by the way, they were bailed out by a hedge fund, um, a Chicago-based hedge we fund. We should mention you represent a few of those hedge funds. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, what they basically do is they're an, a cash management business for people who invest in 
FCMs, futures commission merchants, brokerage firms. And when you keep your money at a, at a futures brokerage firm, not all of it is used for your trade. And you have leftover money. And in order to get extra interest on it, Sentinel would make a deal where you can wire the money to them, and they would sort of tell the brokerage firm, whenever you need the money, we have it. And the customer would get paid a little extra interest for it. So this is a company that deals with the big boys and girls. Specific right? types of traders, commodity and futures traders that traditionally have had larger net worths or institutional clients. Does their problem have anything to do with ordinary investors, and will ordinary investors feel anything, mm -hmm. any echo off of this? I don't think so. We did see a little echo a week ago when, when Sentinel first said it was in trouble because it blamed a liquidity crisis and, and Wall Street reacted thinking, my gosh, the sky is falling and the market tumbled. Uh, then at the end of last week we find out that, the, at least according to the SEC, that this wasn't a liquidity crisis, this was outright fraud. This was, uh, so, but it speaks again to that edginess in the stock market that they're looking for any sort of sign in the sky that points them in one direction sure, or another. Sure, they're running for cover um, when, when they hear news that may or may not directly impact the stock market. But it's important to note that the stock market is up double digits over the last 12 months. The economy is chugging along at 3% based on last quarter's GDP, and unemployment is below 5%. So you have some things that are occurring that are making people nervous, but I think the big picture still looks okay. Do you agree? I think that the... I'm not quite as sanguine as you are. I, I agree that the economy is chugging along, but I don't think it's chugging along with quite the health that it had a year ago. I would agree with we're, that. We're pretty far along into this expansion. Uh, the previous expansions, I think the longest is about 10 years. We're in about year almost eight. So sooner or later, getting back to cycles, the cycle ends and we will hit a recession. I don't know that we're on the verge of it. I don't think we are. but. I wouldn't count it out in the next year or two. The Fed, is there something, and I hear all sorts of debates about this, that is the Fed too worried about bailing out or helping those white knights, the hedge funds, or helping the ordinary investor? Where, where are we on that? Well, the, the Fed, by, by operating as it, as it has, is, is helping out hedge funds, but it is helping out ordinary investors as well. Is it feeling big pressure to do something more radical? Well, I, th I think it is. Uh, I think it's getting uh, the Fed is getting a lot of pressure. They've already done something. Um, but the Fed is operating in its normal scope of things that the Fed can do. Um, they can increase and decrease Fed funds rates, the reserve requirements. They can do open market operations to add liquidity. And I think what we had last year was a little bit of a liquidity crunch, actually more than a little bit of a liquidity crunch. And the Fed stepped in to provide the liquidity to the banks, which was able to make the system operate efficiently. I mean, we have to remember that most of the viewers of this program have money invested in the stock market, and so it's in their interest to see the stock market come back as well. If they're homeowners, I'm sure they'd like to see the housing market come back. Uh, lower interest rates helps both of those things happen. But you both agree that we're going to see in the housing market uh, more bad news before we see good. I think so. I do too. I, I look around Chicago, I see the immense building that's going on downtown. You can head out of the city and, and drive to the edges. No matter which direction you drive, you see housing being built. I don't know who's going to occupy all of those houses, who's going to sell them. I guess if you're a builder, though, once you've started your building, you don't want to stop halfway, then you've lost everything. But as you pointed out, the example you gave of a $100,000 home being $400,000, even if it declines to three hundred dollars or two fifty, dollars it's still a very generous appreciation over a period of time. Well, that will have to be the last word on it, but thank you both very much, Michael Arndt and Robert Stein, for thank being you. with us on thank Chicago you. Tonight. And Chicago Tonight will continue in just a moment, so please don't go away.